do superhumans exist amongst us? A six-year-old girl crying inconsolably, hands on her ears, standing outside the classroom. Teachers are encouraging her to go into the classroom. The more they try, the worse it gets. As a psychiatrist with 16 years' experience, this is one of the many stories that I've heard from teachers and parents. Have you seen anything like this? And have you jumped to the conclusion that they are a naughty child or blamed poor parenting on this? What if there's a perfectly good explanation for this behavior? There's a very high probability that she has what we call autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, or we normally say on the spectrum. According to the latest global figures, one in 56 of us have ASD. And that only accounts for those that have been diagnosed. So there's a very good chance you know of someone who has this condition. It might be you, your child, or someone you love. But it might surprise you to know that this misunderstood cohort has all it takes to astonish you with their incredible abilities, their intricate minds, and purity of soul. In short, they certainly are superhumans. So let's start by imagining for a minute that you are someone who's on the spectrum. What would your life be like? Imagine going through every day being called and considered a weirdo and an outcast, but not understanding why. Imagine being bullied because of your appearance, your different skills, and your lack of social abilities, but not understanding why. Imagine being taken advantage of because you're honest, trustworthy, and transparent, but not understanding why. Imagine being obsessively detailed about a certain subject and ridiculed for being a nerd, but not understanding why. Imagine being snubbed for being direct, literal, and focused, but not understanding why. Imagine needing to hide under a table at a birthday party to escape the sensory overload but not understanding why. You are misunderstood. You feel you are different, and you know that you do not fit in, but you do not know why. And all the time, you're asking the question, what is wrong with me? As a person with ASD, you are confused and frustrated. You cannot comprehend the world that you live in. It's rules for behaviors, and social engagements. You look strangely upon for possessing a superior power of senses. You may be able to hear in audible frequencies. You may be able to smell things others cannot smell, and may be able to read patterns others cannot see. You look down upon for being creatively superlative and averse to routine tasks. This is the price that you pay for neurodiversity. Yet, it is this neurodiversity that drives your passionate interest in certain topics. If you are into maths, you may become a champion math elite. If you are into space, you may have more knowledge than an astrophysicist. If you are into aeroplanes, you may have more knowledge than an aeronautical engineer. And if you are into nature, you probably have more knowledge than David Attenborough. Your question about your sense of style. But you think how you look is just superficial. In fact, you may feel no need to dress at all. Clothes are overrated anyways. You sometimes are called cold and callous, but you are not. In fact, you have got an array of emotions, but you do not know how to express them. But instead of understanding, people judge you 
for not having empathy. Neurodiversity is a blessing. It's a gift. It makes you humane, sensitive, original, progressive, creative. Yet, you are stigmatized for these very attributes. This is life with ASD. This is life as a superhuman. Once considered to be a rare condition, it has become more visible as we have acquired skill set and knowledge base. Since 1970, it has gone from being one in 5,000 diagnosed with this condition to one in 56. And there are likely many more still undiagnosed, like myself. It's considered a male-dominated condition with a male-to-female ratio of four to one. But we know females. They mirror and mask to fit in, hence remain undiagnosed. If that is taken into account, it becomes one in one. So what does all of this mean? Well, the most important thing is that we all need to be trained, educated, our perceptions need to be made more flexible so that we are able to accept the superhumans that exist amongst us. It's not about knowing autism. It's about understanding autism. Well, given that ASD is more common than schizophrenia, you'd be thinking there would be an abundance of services. Unfortunately not. We have failed globally to upskill the health professional to better manage this condition. In the UK, there are certain areas where the waiting lists are up to seven years just to get a diagnosis. Individuals with neurodiversity, they struggle with identities because we tell them and show them that they are different. Adults may be misdiagnosed, mismanaged, trialed on psychotropic medication, and locked in inpatient wards before the health professionals run out of options and finally say, yeah, this might be autism. As a professional, I have seen parents at the verge of a breakdown just fighting a simple battle of referring the child for an assessment. I have witnessed parents burst into tears when I've told them that the child is on the spectrum. They're not upset, they're not. They're relieved. A 61-year-old man hugged me with gratitude after I disclosed the diagnosis to him. He had been searching for answers for a very long time. As I said earlier, it is not about knowing autism. It's about understanding autism. Sophie. A 56-year-old academician, salt and pepper hair, squared face, elegantly dressed every day. She told me that she has been misinterpreted, mistreated, misunderstood in her workplace. She was seen as defiant and anti-management, whereas in reality, she was factual and logical. Throughout her life, she was invisible to everybody for no fault of her own. At the end of the assessment, she told me that I was the first person ever to listen to her, who did not judge her, who was patient with her, and understood her. It's not about knowing autism. It's about understanding autism. This Neurodiverse cohort is one of the most resilient, brave, and courageous group of people I have come across. Despite being ridiculed, rejected, undermined, and mismanaged, they continue to strive for an answer to the question, what is wrong with me? Why am I like this? 
What do you call this strength? I'll call this superpower. They certainly are superhumans. And it's not just their ability to be resilient, it's their ability to do the impossible, and that too from a very young age. I've seen a child develop aerodynamic models for cars. Another one wrote a book on the birds of the world, which is about to be published. A 10-year-old Japanese boy wrote a book, The Reason I Jump, and became the bestseller. ASD affects people from all walks of life. Singer Susan Boyle, actor Dan Aykroyd, film director Tim Burton, and finally, Elon Musk came out in the open and announced that he was on the spectrum. The great Albert Einstein, although not officially diagnosed, but has the professionals agreeing that he was on the spectrum. And the list is endless. So, with so many people experiencing life with ASD, what can we do to make sure that their superhuman abilities are able to flourish and are not lost in oblivion? Firstly, what if the authorities and the leaders educate communities, train schools, colleges, and universities to be able to spot the signs and see it as a strength, not as a weakness. What if they upskill the health professionals to better manage this condition? What if they started early intervention services to infuse social skill set at a very early age and fund schools so that they are able to help the children without asking for a label? That would be a great start, wouldn't it? Secondly, parents, teachers, and employers have a responsibility. They should be able to acknowledge the strengths and strengthen the areas that they find challenging. They should not, uh, not just know what autism is. They should understand the implications of autism on that person. Remember this. It's not about knowing autism. It's about understanding autism. Well, we often teach our children of being tolerant of differences. Tolerance is the wrong word. Acceptance isn't much better either. Isn't it time we show compassion and embrace the ASD neurodiversity so that they are able to flourish and we benefit from them as a community? I cannot forget those words. When I was assessing Gemma, a young female with ASD, she had been bullied all her life. She said to me, normal people do not like different. What if that difference is the superpower? Isn't it time that we embrace the superhumans that exist amongst us? Thank you very much.